This is Women in Music with G Fire Podcast, episode number 37 with singer songwriter Noelle Hampton. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Well, um, let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, We're just going to run down these podcast questions. Where are you from originally? (laughs) I am from Mill Valley, California, and that's right near San Francisco. Oh, wow. Why did you leave? (laughs) Um, I left because... For many reasons. Um, I left because it was getting very expensive. Yeah. Um, We were starting to tour with our band at that time. And um, Andre and I, my husband now, uh, back then we were just together and played together in the band. We were touring a lot and we knew that we, um, we wanted to buy a house. We wanted to live somewhere where we could sustain ourselves. And as we toured, we checked out all these different places. We thought about Nashville and all these different places, but what kept, uh, you know, kind of filling our hearts up was every time we got to Austin, we just loved it. So we just, uh, stuck with that. And here we are years and years later. I think we've been here 17 years. So, wow. Yeah. It's almost like a whole other, life that you have, you know, like we had that many, we had a lot of years in California and then we have a lot of years here now. So it's pretty great. And were you always called the bell sounds? No, no. Um, uh, no, I trying to think when that started, that was, um, in 2013, that was when we formed the bell sounds. Otherwise it was under my name, Noel Hampton. And it started, you know, back in San Francisco under my name. So it was like, back then I called myself all folkative rock because it was between alternative rock and folk. Um, then we pushed further towards the Americana side. And then when we moved here, we were bridging back towards the pop alternative side. And that's where the bell sounds came back in. So we felt like what we were doing um, post Americana was very different and it needed a new name. <laughs> that makes total sense to me. Yeah, exactly. Well, cool. And when did you start uh, writing songs? Um, I was about 20, I want to say. Um, I had left, I mean, San Diego, where I was going to school, I had left there after two years under some kind of stressful circumstances. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to college. I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And I was at a family um, vacation up at our cabin in, on the Yuba River in California. My dad had brought his guitar. My dad, they just played folk songs, you know, for fun. They were never, you know, my aunt was the most professional musician of our family, but everyone else just kind of jammed. My grandpa was a great harmonica player and I grew up around it, but I never did I ever think it would be something I would end up doing. Um, but lo and behold, uh, <laughs> I, w- I picked up my dad's guitar and there was a little chord chart and I taught myself three guitars, I mean, three chords on the guitar. Right. And by the time they, they all came up back to the cabin, I was like, check this out. I can play this Dylan song. And they were, they were just kind of surprised I picked it up so quickly. Um, and that just sort of sparked this whole new thing for me. And I literally felt like a light bulb went off. I felt that joy of creation in a whole other way because I was leaning more towards um, visual art and graphic design and things like that and this really turned my head and I just was shocked that I could even do it um, that I could write my own song even though they were pretty bad back then they were all very hippy dippy save the world but um, Mm -hmm. but uh, you know I was young and idealistic and um, wanted to write hippy dippy songs and uh, you know I was just surprised I could even do it the singing you know came later this the getting better at all that stuff that took years but um immediately i took to the whole experience of music to song you know yeah and i also played a little piano so that helped as well so did did you study piano as a child i didn't study anything but cello that was my instrument as a kid 
Um, piano, I never got to take lessons. I taught myself how to play. I still teach myself how to play. I'd never taken piano lessons. I really don't know what I'm doing, but in my band now I play primarily synth and a little, and I play guitar on the side, but I used to play mostly guitar, but I've switched over keys because I really love it. So, I mean, it's just, it's fun. You know, you don't have to be a virtuoso to write cool songs on keys. So oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's the whole pop world is, you yeah. know, pretty much anybody can do it. Yeah. I mean, you just have to have a sense of melody and, you know, ideas and and it pushes you to change instruments, you know. I haven't left guitar. I love playing guitar. By no means have I left it. But it's good it's good to shake it up. Yeah, just add some new twists. To, yeah, uh, to your stable yeah. of tricks. So that exactly, yeah. exactly. Good for you. Yeah. Um, so I started. I started around twenty, and it took me a good couple years before I was on stage and you know actually doing something with it. So that sounds. Yeah, that sounds like a great path to me. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So when you sent the uh, video for your song "All About Love," and yeah. I clicked on it, I'm like. Oh, wow, this is so fun. <laughs> Yay. I mean, at a roller derby, I mean, roller skating park. I know. I know. Isn't it special? It was special. It's not there anymore. Oh, it's not there anymore? No, no. I know. But there were noise complaints about it. Um, yeah, and they shut it down. It was uh, it was just south of L.A. in between, kind of like between L.A. and San Diego, I think. I never went there physically. Um, okay, but so my friend Sarah skated there um, while it was there, and she's the one that is the main skater and directed that video. So how did this all come about? I, I'm just so fascinated by the process. So you, you had, <laughs> at first you had the song. You said you wrote it with another woman? Yeah, so um, I how I've been doing my music recently is that I'll produce – basically the entire track um i'll get it to the point where it's like it has all the synth parts it has bass parts it has a l all the stuff and but i don't know what i'm writing about yet so i'll just create the track okay. and then later i put the words to the track depending on how that track makes me feel or what it expresses um and honestly i set out to kind of do the opposite i i really i needed one more song for our ep and i thought i don't really want to do a disco song because i've been doing that recently and i thought i'll shift away but it just it just came out and so i let the muse flow and i wrote this track and i had an idea for a very simple pop chorus which is where it kind of landed but i really wanted to involve my friend lizzie she's like um she, lizzie lehman is uh just an extraordinary human. Um, like she's really a good friend of mine. She lives in, uh, she and her wife live in my neighborhood and we hung out during the whole pandemic there in my pod, you know, and mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time together and Lizzie has struggled with all kinds of, you know, mental health, depression and stuff out. I'm not outing her. She, she will admit to that. And she, and because of it, she's become this really positive force on, on Instagram. And she does this incredible Instagram art on her page that is so positive and it's queer positive and it's just mental health, positive body image, positive. Um, it's just, she's just such a light, um, and I, I just wanted to bring her in just to like have her be a part of something because I knew it was going to be special and mm -hmm. fun. And like, it, you know, I wanted it to feel kind of like one of those 70s, like almost like a 70s Marvin Gaye meets like modern day music, you know? It sounds more like chic. Yeah. Well, OK. And Nile Rogers is yeah. the one that started that skate rink. Okay. okay, so, so that, yeah, that, it, all comes yeah okay. it all comes around. So, but yeah, it, I wanted, the, I guess what I mean is the words, not the music to sound like Marvin, okay, but, so. but to have kind of this like, you know, get, you know, get with your brother and get with your sister and come back or because the pandemic and the politics have been so divisive and so horrible and we've all felt it. And we both knew that we just wanted to write a really like, let's get out of this and come back to the just that it's really all about love, which is what the song is called. Um, and all the time I was writing the track, I just kept seeing roller skating. I grew up in the Bay Area, like I said, and my aunt and uncle were great roller skaters and they would pick us up. They would actually drive really far and pick us up, my sister and I, um, every Sunday and we would go to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco and we would skate. And it was just an incredible experience. Um, 
uh, just growing up in the 70s, like with people with their boom boxes on their shoulders, skate, you know, skating in the park, it was like the quintessential thing that, you know, you see in footage and, you know, but any of the young generation never saw it firsthand as it came around. Um, we were young enough that we got to witness it, you know, and um, so I just had it in my head that I just visualized this thing. And I've been following Sarah on Instagram. I met her a couple times. Um, and I just, I messaged her immediately. I said, would you be willing to do something for this song? And I sent her the song and she loved it. And she was like, yes, of course. So she really put the whole thing together. And, um, I just put my blind trust in her because she, you know, she's so visually where, where I'm at. I just love her visuals on her Instagram. Um, so yeah, she did a fantastic job. I'm so glad it was shot there because now it's actually kind of historical footage because that place no longer exists. And I don't know if it will ever come back there, you know? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, um, it's pretty special. Um, and I just love the way it came, it came out and all the skaters involved are incredible, but the whole vibe just makes me so happy. And it you makes know. me it makes me happy, and I saw you had about fifty thousand views, so that's uh, <laughs> that's, that's good, pretty inspirational, right? yeah. It is, yeah. And I think you know, um, it's just a really it's a hot it's a hot thing right now. The roller skating it came back around, so it's a good time to like bring that back and everything. But every I felt like it was one of those situations where you kind of feel like everything finally fell into place you know for one specific song sometimes yeah. we have dreams of making a kind of video and like i have all kinds of amazing thoughts about videos i want to make do they oh. get made no because it's expensive and it's hard so this felt like yay it happened you know so thank you for saying that too i appreciate that you got that vibe and we're into it. I appreciate that. I mean, I felt like I was watching Saturday Night Fever <laughs> yes. or what was that Donna Summers movie? Thank God it's Friday or something. Or Xanadu. Xanadu. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, Love yeah, that. just really had, yeah, that sort of disco between 75 and 82. Yeah, I love feeling. that. Yes. And so, so you're the one that played all the synthesizers then. Yeah, well, okay, on the original um, demo thing that I did where I built up the track, I did. Right. Um, and then we got my friend Dan who plays with the Texas Gentleman, and he plays he plays in a bunch of bands. Um, he plays with uh, Sir Woman. He's an incredible um, key player. And he – so he kind of – he he's a real synth player, I'll just say that. And okay. he came in and basically he took my ideas – and played them a heck of a lot better than I ever could have. <laughs> and then that. and then he did the end part, which is more of the solo, and which which is not something I ever would have tried to touch. Mm -hmm. um, so that really kind of elevated the whole thing. But you know, I'm I'm never ashamed to say when I cannot, uh, it's not my thing to do a certain part. It's like I'm happy to pass it off to the people that really should just to make the song shine. Um, and yeah, and he uh, he he did. <laughs> Again, they're they're very uh, period sound. Yeah, you know, it's that yeah. kind of Moog synthesizer sound. I'm, I'm not sure what he used exactly, but mm -hmm. definitely is of that era. Yeah, yeah. As well yeah. as that uh, that guitar that sort of yeah, just Andre, Andre, yeah, Andre well, did he's, that. Yeah, he's kind of doing the Nile Rodgers thing, and it's funny because he is in the vid Nile Rodgers makes a little tiny cameo in the very end of the video, but we're not really uh, talking about uh, that because we're not sure if he was supposed to be in the video or not. So oh we're just not really. Gosh. But he's in there in the end. Yeah, you can see him. Um, yeah, it's it's a full like you know turnaround from. I mean, I I loved disco music growing up. I have the Disco Duck record right now in my <laughs> album collection. I loved disco music so, so much. And I I didn't really ever have the, um, I didn't have the means kind of to pull it off before because I didn't know how to create it. Like just playing an acoustic guitar, it didn't really feel like you know, that's not how I would sit down and write. Like, it's, it's felt so much more natural to start with beats and mm -hmm. synths mm -hmm. and fall into that than it did. But back in the day, I just wasn't using technology to write my music. I was really just using the sim single instrument at a time. Um, and because I've been, I taught myself how to use logic years a few years ago, I feel like everything for me has opened up and changed just being in full control of my own um, creative 
song destiny, you know, is from start to finish. I mean, Andre comes in at a certain point and we, we do start to do the co-production thing on like the tail end of everything. But I have like lots of ideas that are there and in place when I take it to the studio to recut the guitars and recut the vocals. We, we have the big map of everything, you know? So it's been really, really cool because I truly feel like they're my babies that are like really from start to finish hearing it how I envisioned it rather than before, you know, how you take a song to a band and they play their parts and you're like, "Mm, that's good. That's not what I would really do or something. Right, but then you've already hired the band. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard to have those dialogues. It's also hard to, I think, and I'm just going to say this, that I think it's, it's hard being a woman in the industry and telling people that they're not doing something right um, or that you're not, you know, that they could do something better or, you know, you get a lot of shut, shut the girl down, you know, shut that woman down and uh, let me just do my thing, you know, and you start to get quiet because of it. So um, I I just prefer now to kind of have a lot more control uh, out of the gate and that feels really fun. So. So did you do all the beats? Yeah. So yeah, all the drums are programmed by me and I do a combination of um, program programming my own via logic and um, using some of their drummer technology. I usually layer like about three or four different drum situations at the same time. So you don't really know some of the things are happening, some loops some things like that. So yeah, just, just really have fun with that. I love that part of it. I always loved hip hop. So that's a big part of my inner world. I grew up, Tupac was one of my best friends growing up Tupac uh, in was high one school. Of your best friends? Uh-huh. In high school. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. We used to go to this little club in Katati where he could rap. Um, it was the only club that was like an under 18 that we could go to. We drove about an hour outside of town in the middle of the country. And uh, yeah, I mean, just I grew up like loving all that music. High school was hip hop for me, hip hop and and reggae pretty much. So I like beats. (laughs) I mean, I I was a rave DJ for eight years. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm I'm pretty into the beats. So yeah, you know, know, she's got sort of that, uh, that, that, Again, those disco kind of drum sounds. Yeah. You know, we played after everyone got vaccinated and you kind of had that sensation of like, life is coming back. We're all okay. You know, there was sort of that elusive moment of like, (laughs) we're all going to be okay. Well, we played 310 right right around that time. Mm -hmm. And... um, and, and it was so nice because it was kind of our comeback show. You know, we, we put out 12 songs in 2020 and um, nobody had really ever heard them other than in, on, you know, listening devices. They never heard us play them. Right. Um, so we played a lot of those songs and we played some of the ones from the EP that we just put out. And I, it was the first time at any of our shows that like I've seen that many people shaking their butts and dancing at a show and it felt so good it was like that's what i want from all this new material is just for people to like feel it and want to move their bodies and not want to sit down you know i want them to feel even if it's a dark pop song even if it's kind of a weird dark subject that i want them to feel like those grooves those deep grooves and um that's just been a blast for me so Good for you. Uh, At this point, I'm going to say, let's have our listeners listen to All About Love. Get down. 
Yeah, that is just such an amazing track. Thank you. I really, really feel it. And yeah, I feel like dancing. Yay! <laughs> or I used to, I used to say, put the little butt wiggle in there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let's see. Um, this is available on an EP. Yeah, the EP um, came out in what was it, July or August? Um, it's called All About Love: Five Songs. Okay. Um, and uh, we also put out the 12 songs that we ended up putting into one collection on Bandcamp only. Um, and those are called the 2020 singles. It's called Stay Alive. Um, <laughs> Stay Alive. Huh? Well, that's the last song that I did with Ray Prim. Um, and it's the song for December in 2020. And um, yeah. Wait, wait a minute. Was... Wait. Who's who's Ray Prim and what's the song of December? Oh, gosh. You don't know who Ray Prim is. Um, nope. Ray Prim. Ray Prim is, what does he call his style of music? Soul, soul writer. He calls himself a soul writer. He's a songwriter, but he's soulful. And he comes from a history of all kinds of like rock, like heavy rock and roll. Um, but he's a soul, he's a soul writer. And mm-hmm. um, he, he's just a character. He's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. Um, I highly recommend you check out his music. He's just incredible. He's a fabulous band um and great harmonies and he's just one he's one of my dearest friends and we both watch a lot of tv a lot a lot a lot and we both write a lot of songs from watching tv and so he's kind of my tv guru because he goes so quickly through the things that I'm, i haven't even caught up and so he'll just send me here's the next thing you have to watch and so then i have to watch that and then he sends me the next thing so um we had both watched this show honestly i can't even remember what the show was called um but it was like it had to do with pandemic and apocalyptic stuff and all this stuff and we both watched it and i was like you know they the the characters they keep um saying to this main character they say stay jessica stay alive or stay alive jessica because she's like the heroine she's supposed to save them all basically okay and so they kept saying that through the show so i i called them up and i was like okay let's just write this song stay alive together so again i wrote the whole track um i wrote a verse sent him the song he wrote a verse and then we ended up singing it together as kind of a duet on the on the record on the track um and it's 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 dark it's beautiful but it's dark and um you know, it also had to do with like Black Lives Matters mm-hmm. and stuff like that, because, you know, that's a very hard thing for um, a black man to stay alive in this world, you know, when they're facing so many things. But it had it had, just had to do with what everybody was going through and um, and our health and everything. And I love that song. So I, I thought what a fitting title for the entire body of work of 2020 is <laughs> to stay alive, stay alive. Yeah, exactly. So you mentioned Bandcamp. Is that the only place you can get both the the twelve song collection and the EP, or do you have uh, other ways of getting it? Do you have it? Did you decide to print any CDs or vinyl, or did you do it all digital? Um, so here's what I've been doing. I've mm-hmm. it's all on Bandcamp. Um, we just added it into one collection. So when you download it on Bandcamp, you don't have to down each single download each single individually. So that's just easier um, for the customer. But we also think of it as a collection. So I have a Spotify playlist of all those 2020 songs that acts as the album right now. I will eventually upload it as an album. Um, But Bandcamp, you can listen. But for shows, I have been hand printing CDs. And I find this to be a much better option because some people still do enjoy getting it. But this way, I'm in full control of um, how many I need to have at any given point, and I don't right. have to sit on inventory. So I make this really cool package um, that has, I make stickers of the album artwork, whatever it is, and they're really nice glossy stickers, and I get these black CD cases, and I put these nice glossy stickers on the front, and I put the uh, a sticker on the back that has the song titles and everything, and I hand um, print, hand make all the CDs and I and Andre and I autograph them all. And then um, I put it in the little CD case and I put a little fortune in with each one. So everybody gets a little fortune. So and it's kind of like having a hand numbered, you know, CD because I'm not going to make a ton of them. They're all very special. And they're all made by me personally. And um, the artwork is made by me and everything. So it's feels very it feels more personal. And I think people um, 
are enjoying that because even if they don't want to collect CDs, it's just kind of like a fun little thing to have, you know? Right. So that's what I'm doing now with physical product. Um, I don't know what I always wanted to have vinyl, but it's such a process and we would have to split it up into multiple records and stuff just based on the time. So someday we will do something on vinyl, but we have not yet. Um, but that would be lovely. <laughs> well, now, um, have you sent the uh, even the this, this single to any of the local radio stations? I mean... Yeah, um, KUTX played mm-hmm. it. It was their song of the day. Um, and um, Sun Radio played it a few times. They played a couple of the songs from that um, EP. And also Loris Lowe um, played it. And we just did one of their... Um, their uh, ACL radio shows that they were they showcased us with a couple other bands um, and uh, let's see the bat has played it so yeah we've had on a lot of the local stations I I sent it to my radio promoter friend who is handles huge acts like Taylor Swift and stuff okay and I asked him do you think this song um, would be worth me you know paying or you know kind of going after some radio promo and he said which i already knew which is why i hadn't done it that always the state of my music is that i'm in between everything and i don't fit enough in one genre to really fall into the slot and you know something that i've come to actually really appreciate about the way i write as opposed to looking at it as a negative um because we just we cross a lot of of borders sonically and i think that's okay and i and i don't want to shape shift to to try to be something all the way in one direction when that doesn't really feed me right so i really like the fact that we're different and so i knew that he was kind of going to say that but i was curious because it was such a pop song you know and it's good to get feedback you know i think it's good to reach out with your music and and get p- people to say actually no or yes or whatever they're going to say you know um it's good to it's good to take risks and, and put it out there but um yeah so his answer was no you're not taylor swift you don't fall specifically well his answer was just with this specific song yeah. i wouldn't be able to push it to triple a entirely right. i wouldn't be able to push it to college because it's not 100 percent college i would you know it's, it's just right. kind of it's it's a uh, uh, it's in between and it, and therefore it doesn't know where it has a home. So maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but I think that's up to individual listeners. But with the video, we've definitely seen an uptick in like, you know, kind of the Spotify and things like that. You start to see that people from all over the world are, uh, are kind of finding it. And, you know, you see listeners from Europe and the Middle East and South America and stuff. And it, it does feel good to just organically grow your your sound you know absolutely now okay so did you did you give one of your homemade cds like to kutx no no i didn't they have the whole ep i did pr and uh, my pr agent adrian sent them everything so they have it all they didn't need an actual physical cd okay so they just downloaded off a of Bandcamp. Yeah, uh, no, we gave them a, a google file of the whole thing yeah so they have the okay whole. okay yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm KUT, just KUT, KUTX has KUTX has always been really good about um, not needing the um, the physical thing. You know, for the last few years, they haven't needed anything physical. For me, at least, I'm not sure about major labels and stuff, but um, just for local bands, they're pretty good about the way that they can do it digitally. So um, right, just get a and same with Sun. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. They just need a good high high res file, and they're they're good to go. Okay. Where's file on Google? Mm-hmm. Um, can I ask you, like, uh, okay, so you've got a PR person, mm-hmm. and I'm curious about the cost of all these things, just because you know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, like most, um, yeah. Well, well, it you know, it's very, it's it is expensive. It's um, PR is um, something that you have to feel like you have a product that is a has a really good story and is worth talking about um b there are some songs on there that are going to be some jams that people are going to want to play on the radio and talk about you know i mean it doesn't always have to be a story like a tragedy or anything it could be an uplifting story it could be whatever but pr is only good if you're going to give them something to talk about you know and 
And we, you know, we had not done any PR for the entire time that we were putting out all the, all the great music that we put out in 2020 that I'm really proud of. Mm-hmm. And we hadn't done any. And I just figured, man, we really have to do this because now we've put out, you know, uh, let's see, 12, 17 songs, right? you know, that are, that are really new and a new sound for the Bell Sounds. And we have to honor it by, you know, it's like having a billboard for your product or doing, right. we have to spend some money to quote unquote advertise ourselves, And the way to do that is to get PR. Um, and if you get someone that knows the local community, well, um, then you, then you're even in better business. You know what I mean? Right. Because, um, you just want to have, um, I mean, it ranges like there are some PR agents that do a monthly fee. There are some mm-hmm. that do a buy the project fee. Mm-hmm. There are some that do buy the contacts. So you can say like, I want to hit up these blogs, these magazines, these things, and they'll do all of those those things. But, you know, you just have to talk to each PR agent and kind of find out how they operate, you know, and Adrian, mm-hmm. Adrian Lake is, um, she was a booker for a really long time. Uh, and she sort of just naturally uh, transitioned into more of the PR side. It seemed very natural for her, although she still loves to book bands and she's great at that. Um, but she and I have been circling around each other and getting to know each other over the last few years. And I really love her. And she is just one of those people that you know is when she calls up the radio stations and calls up the different people that she is going to represent you well and that she is going to be kind and she's going to be thoughtful and she's going to you know get the best out of you that she can put forward to the to you know all the the magazines and things um and she's kind of trying to create a a thing where she can be in a little bit more of an affordable zone for people. Um, Of course, she'll still have to, you know, make a living, but she's trying to do, do right by the more independent artists and stuff. So, so that was really fun to work with her. I really enjoyed it. I've also worked with juice um, in town. That's Heather Wagner Reed's um, PR firm and they're great. And they did a great job. Mm -hmm. Um, Joe Ray Domino is great. Uh, There's a lot of great PR right here in Austin. Um, But don't do it if you, if if, if you're just going to start making your next record and forget about that record that you just did, you know, a lot of people do that. They just put it out and then they're on. Don't spend the money if you're not going to like really want to invest in the story that you just tried to tell, you know. It, it's a commitment. I mean, it's a lot of work. You have to get all the material together. You have to get press photos. You have to do all this stuff. You have to. I mean, I update all my bio every single time. Adrian helped me re- redo that. Um, it's it's a lot of work. So that's my advice. <laughs> well, how did you fund it? Did you do a Kickstarter or did you? How, how did you? No, do it? we pay for everything ourselves. Okay. Um, we put. We just put everything that we earn, we put right back into a band account. Okay. Um, And I sell jewelry and I make jewelry and that's part of my merchandise. So um, that's part of um, part of the money that goes back in. So it sort of feeds itself in a way. We also had, um, we've had, well, we had Black Fret grant last year. Nice. Yeah. um, And but the way it worked in 2020 was it was kind of they just split it all up between the bands equally, whereas normally they would give a big grant and a small grant. And um, so this time they just did that and they sort of spread it out through the year. But we basically got about 7000 from from Black Fret through the year Mm -hmm. last year. And that really helped with um, paying for the actual a recording of the EP. Okay. Um, so that was helpful. And we also had a song in, in a TV show on Netflix called Outer Banks. And that was some decent money. And um, I, you know, I get ASCAP checks and stuff that are pretty good from all the TV film stuff that I've done in the past. So all that adds up and we just put it right back into our band account and, and keep creating, you know, that's mm-hmm. all we, we just keep creating. And, um, you know, I, it's not like we're ever really we're never getting on top of the situation right. right but we're just reinvesting in ourselves creatively i guess is the way to put it that's why we have side hustles you know okay so what, <laughs> yeah, tell me what are your side hustles i mean because you're not making the entirety of your uh living off of your shows and recordings are you 
No, 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 not at all. I teach vocal lessons. Okay, me too. <laughs> and I have my jewelry business. Um, and Andre um, teaches up at ACC recording classes. Okay. And they have a brand new, beautiful campus at the Highland, the old Highland Mall, and it's just stunning. I just went up there a couple days ago. Um, so if anyone is thinking of getting a music degree, it's the place to go. Um, and uh, he also is the main engineer at Congress House Studios. Oh, so Mark he's Collins. uh-huh, and he's an independent engineer as well. So he's constantly busy. He works every day. So our world is very still revolving around music, even with our extracurricular stuff that we do. But um, but it, it does earn us actual money to pay our mortgage and pay you know pay for the things we need. So that's how we're still in Austin. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm always asking because independent musicians, it's it's just a challenge. It is a huge challenge, a huge challenge. And we've done, um, we didn't do a Kickstarter. We did two records ago for The Sea Within. We did um, Indiegogo. Okay. Did you like that? I did, but man, it was a lot of work. Okay. Fulfillment is a lot of work. Um, the, the making the video to get people to, to join you on there. It's all a lot of work. And I know I hear that from all of my friends that have done all their fundraising campaigns. It's so much work. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, you're fulfilling like still a year later on certain things, you right. know, and where you really want to kind of move on. So it's sort of it's kind of like one of those things where I try to avoid it if at all possible. Mm -hmm. And because of the way that we're recording now, because I'm doing so much of it at home, yeah. we're really not spending as much in the studio because we can be very efficient when we go in there. Okay. And we only need a couple extra players to come in and do the things that they need to do. Right, um, right. And so I've kind of got it. We've kind of have it down to a science. And we're just like, cook, 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 get in there, recut vocals, recut guitars. Um, bass player will come in and play something very similar to what I've done mm -hmm. already. Um, if we want actual bass, sometimes we keep synth bass and, and we keep a lot of the uh, program drums. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, hire a drummer to just throw down a track on top of what I've done. So it's making for much more affordable recording. Um, which is great. Yeah, anything to make it more. Rec <laughs> um, do you record at Congress House? Yeah, so we. Oh, okay. um, so I record here in my home studio first, right, right. and then um, I take everything to Congress House, and Andre uh, transfers it over to Pro Tools, and we um, just hit all the things that need a better sound. I, right. I would never try to record guitars in this tiny little room, which you can see the viewers can't, but you can see that it's just a little tiny bedroom. Well, um, it's yours. It's mine, and and I make great music in here, but I wouldn't try to do you know fancy stuff in this room. I don't keep any of the vocals that I do. I recut all the vocals on a nicer microphone and do all that. Um, and Andre's really great at you know he's a stunning engineer he just makes everything sound incredible so even the stuff that i've done on logic and mm -hmm. the stuff that i've pro all the program drums and everything he'll take that and you know put his engineering skills to making that just sound humongous um so he's he's like that's why i said you know we always call it co-production because mm -hmm. even though like a lot of the musical ideas come from me it would never shine if it weren't for Andre taking it to that next level, which I'm admittedly cannot do and don't really care to do. It's not, you know. You don't have to do everything. I do not want to be a proper recording engineer. That is not anything I want to do. And Andre does it great, so why should I try to do it myself? Exactly, exactly. I just don't want to. <laughs> yeah. So I just, a couple more questions. Like, yeah. Of the budget on the video. Like, oh, um, can I ask like how much? What that I mean, be? I'd rather not talk about okay. that because that's between me and Sarah. Um, okay. Never mind. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll just say that I my video budget is basically very, very, very small. So I have to find um, people that are willing to work with me and do things, you know, and I have to do a lot of the legwork with them and do a lot of the work. Um, and I felt like um, I knew that Sarah could do it, you know, on yeah. a certain budget. And she, she was so great to say yes, because I mean, she has like, 120,000 followers on Instagram and all those skaters each have like 100,000 followers or more. So it's, it's just one of those things where it was like, 
they were just she just wanted to do it for the love of the song and that she knew me and like what, what we were doing yeah um but i have grand ideas and i don't get to do them because of my lack of a video budget but right. I, I did curious you know. well i did one with barbara frigere um for a song a few years back called like a villain and it was a huge production and i think i want to say that it ended up like around eight to ten grand i can't exactly right. remember mm -hmm. um but it was a huge production and even at that we we had to skimp you know we really had to like cut back here and cut back there um, and she really didn't even make any money after all was said and done. I mean, it costs a lot to like pay for the place where you shoot and the camera insurance and all the stuff and deposits that you don't get back. And so you really have to be thoughtful about that. I'm finding that, um, you know, I do, uh, Google advertising on my, on the videos that I really, like I did it for now you see me and I'm doing it for this one, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, helping the video reach a lot more people. Okay. And I find that spending your money on the back end is a lot more helpful than spending it. You know, you can make a really good video for not a lot of money, but you just need to get it out there. Right, exactly. And pe people forget that like advertising can really, really help. And so I'd rather spend $400 on the back end you know, doing a Google uh, YouTube ad and and mm -hmm. and see where that lands. That's been successful for us. So these are great. I mean, I you know, I try to reach, you know, other indie musicians that want hints about, hey, I can't do mm -hmm. this. How could I do that? That's one of the purposes of my my podcast. Yeah, you know, because yeah. it is all about us middle. Yeah, you know, yeah. Middle. What do I call it? You know, there's there's the Taylor Swifts are on the top end, and there's the uh, amateurs yeah. that are using whatever guitar band or whatever. Yeah. But those of us who are making a living in music, we just have to be very resourceful because the the pay isn't that great. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you really have to know how to do all the things. Like I know how to do. I do all my own design work. I I do all my own posters, my art for my albums. My I do. I designed our website. I update our website constantly. I made our EPKs. You know, everything. I have. I. I've done all this stuff because you have to, otherwise right. you have to pay somebody. So you have to learn how to do all of this stuff. So the ideas for videos, like the one I did, I, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it came out last year. Um, my friend, Sila, you know, Sila. Yeah. Um, I, mean, okay. I don't know her, know her, but, you but know. you know who she is. I know she's who a she is. local singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. And she's an incredible artist. And she started doing um, animation on video. And I just had this, idea one night and I said I know exactly what I want to do but I need Sela to do this very specific thing and we shot I shot the video all by myself here in in my house mm -hmm. cost me nothing right and then I sent the footage to Sela and she animated over part of it and I animated over part of it and it turned into this super cool video that I love so much um, and we did it for a very very small budget but it all starts with an idea that you can actually physically do something right. you can see you can physically do it if you know the right people and have the right tool like the right iPhone or the right whatever to shoot it you know you don't need all the fancy stuff you know right right so you, you just shot it on your iPhone I shot it on my iPhone yeah mm -hmm. And uh, and just against a white, I have a white background in my house and lit it myself and uh -huh. and did the coloring and um, Barbara helped me a little bit, but I did the, the coloring and then Seal and I just b both did animation over it. I did computer animation that was like already created that I added on top of me and she right. hand um, animated over me so that in certain scenarios I had like, I knew what I wanted. So I filmed right. myself doing these things like where I would be pulling down a balloon and I would be drawing on clown makeup. And so I knew that she could draw the clown makeup as I'm drawing it, that she would fill it in, you know? So yeah. just these little visuals um, that, you know, I knew she could handle and she did. Um, and so, yeah. Shoot, if anyone wants an idea for a video, just come to me. I can't guarantee you'll be able to do it, but I've got all kinds. <laughs> I'll probably hit you up once these... I know, my like, so, God. Yeah, yeah. The brain I, never stops. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, as a creative, we don't want our brains to stop. I know, I know, but it can be exhausting in the middle of the night when you're up. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't sleep because your brain won't shut down. 
Uh. Well, um, let's see. Do you have any plugs or anything, or do you want to um, anything you want to put out there? Well, first, your website is the bell sounds.com b e l l e sounds s o u n d s.com the bell sounds.com and you can pretty much get to everything that we have just from right there there's a little bar down at the bottom that has all the links to find us everywhere um we're on spotify apple music um youtube uh wherever we're we're everywhere pretty much um and of yeah. course the all all about love i watched on youtube yeah, you can watch it on YouTube. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, I feel like we didn't get started with Adrian on the PR for our All About Love um, EP, like as early as we should have. Okay. So, so she was kind of like, ah, I have to get all this out really quickly. And there's kind of a time frame. So I do feel like we kind of missed a little bit of, of the boat there because of us, not because of her. Okay. Um, but I do feel like a lot of people just kind of thought that we put that song out and that they didn't know there were other songs that went along with that. So I would just say, you know, ch check that song out, but please go check out the whole EP because we really love the way that whole EP turned out. And it's just beautiful so i hope you guys can take take a minute and listen to the whole thing and what uh, just go to your website and that it'll, it'll uh yeah there's it'll... links there's links on the front to find that on the front page and everything yeah good for you i mean yeah. you're just a, a, a good example of a very well-rounded indie woman musician singer thank you that's you know, sweet thank you it just you know it's so inspirational for me to do these interviews i actually i think uh well, i just interviewed Betty Sue. Did you yeah. do something with her? I'm actually about to go meet her in, a, in the next couple hours. We're, okay. doing a vo we're, we're doing a vocal session together today. There we go. There we go. Um, so I, yeah, yeah. I interviewed uh, she's her one of my, Sunday. She's one of my dearest friends. I love her. Um, and she's also like that. She, she can create her own art. She is such a visual person and she, she dabbles in so many creative things and it's helpful for her as uh, side hustles and things like that right, exactly. we we also both i mean you mentioned side hustles and i forgot to mention that i do one of my main side hustles is singing on other people's records as well i get hired a lot for that so um and so that is great i love to sing harmonies and background parts and yeah. make make up complicated background parts like you know um it's just it's just a, another way to express creativity and it's fun when it's on someone else's record instead of your right, own. Exactly. <laughs> it's like exactly. you get to put a little part of you, a little stamp. On, so, on their, yeah. Yeah. So Betty and I are going to do some choir stuff today. Okay. You're going to do two, two voices and make it uh -huh. into a... Uh, yes, we are. However many. Make it, into, make it into a hallelujah choir. Chorus. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. Did I'm I glad you're any? doing this. Um, I don't, I don't. Yeah, did I miss anything? Did, is there anything I just didn't uh, get around to? I mean, there's 20 something years of a career. It's hard to sum it up in, in, in a, an hour. In yeah, an hour. Minutes. So, yeah, but yeah. I, I, just, I just love this whole song and the video and the vibe. And I was just really drawn in. And I'm like, we got to do a podcast about this. Thank you. And I hope people take a second to listen to it. It's such a feel good song. And, um, and it, it, and it means a lot to me. So I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. And uh, I guess this is it for now. Thank you so okay. much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Take okay. care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.